Hi, Shanna here with Not Just Small Talk. My guest today is Danny Delancey. He's an artist who paints regularly in the French Quarter. He's actually the cousin of one of my very dear friends, so I've been following his work for a while. His work is rich and pops of color, and it has a lot of great symbolism. You're going to enjoy this. I'll be right back with Danny Delancey. This is Shanna with Not Just Small Talk. Hi, Shanna Forstall here with Not Just Small Talk, and my guest today is Danny Delancey. He is an artist here in New Orleans, and we kind of have mutual people. Mm -hmm. So one of my best friends for many years is Tatum, and this is Tatum's cousin, so that's how we met. Hello, everyone. And we've typically met in bars. Mm -hmm. just, that's restaurants, just how it, bars. Restaurants, yeah. bars, having a glass of wine, we're out, we run into each other, we're like, hey, what's up? Right. So I thought it would be really fun to have Danny on here to just talk about his work. His work is beautiful, um, as you're going to see. Thank you. Um, but he's, he's become kind of a New Orleans icon. So talk to us a little bit about your artistic journey. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. All how the way back to the beginning. How did you get into art to start with? Were you just a child and just like brilliance came out, or what happened? Well, I think um, the fun part of that story is the first art contest, my father said, uh, I got home and I was like, Dad, I want to join this art contest and I need a poster and some pencil colors. So he drove me to the, the drugstore at the time. Right. And they had posters right. and pencil colors. Right, used to have right? supplies. So I got to the house and I quickly did a drawing trying to impress him and he came in and he was like, all right, well think about this. Do the windows on a boat look like that? <laughs> and I was like, uh, no. And he's like, so fix them. So I fixed it. And then I fixed the shape of the boat. Oh, so he no. walked me all the way through the things that he could see that were wrong with the picture, and I fixed them all on the spot. <laughs> and at the end, he said, okay, well, your art lesson, and the only one I'm going to give you is observation, that you need to observe everything and pay attention wow. to it. And then when you try to recreate it, recreate it the way that you see it, not the way you think it should be or go. Oh, right? really? So. That started it. By the time I was in my high school class, I designed our senior shirts and our school mascot for the school. Um, by the time I was 17, I did designs for Paul Mitchell, United Way, Walk America, and then um, other. I've had other jobs, but the most you know fulfilling have to be the ones that were involving creativity and right. doing art. And now with this series with the stroll, it's been um, eight years of doing the Stroll series and right. it's every year just gets better and better and better. That's great. So, but it's been a very long and it's a, you know, a long journey, but it's a decision you have to make. It's not about just being an artist, it's living the life of an artist right. because you have to accept that lifestyle. There are no guarantees, yes. there's no set income. It's as, it's going to go as far as you're going to take it. Yeah. So if you're willing to accept that challenge, absolutely. Then and that's something I was talking it. to some friends about recently. You know, I have friends of all kinds of artists, um, musicians and painters and actresses and you know the mm -hmm. whole realm: singers, performers, entertainers, drag queens, everybody. But um, it's it's really is a life choice because yes. it's you know your art is something that kind of when you're an artist it's oftentimes it becomes a part of your soul and it's something that you become like it's a passion it's like something you can't get away from that passion you can't can very stop. easily become like an addiction like i and have to and it can kind of take today. over right exactly yes and then it, what's frustrating is like a lot of people that i know are trying to juggle like a side job and then their art and that's right. really difficult it's it's really sad to me in america that we don't have a better support system for people who are in the arts because or funding for people that are doing the art right yeah, right exactly. i mean that's that's what I mean. Like they are having to juggle often two and three jobs. I know people juggling two, juggling two and three jobs so that they can do their art. And it's their like, passion. why? Right, exactly. well, our world needs the art. It needs all of these things that we're creating. I get so many people that come up to me throughout the course of the year, every year, and you know, their their response to what I'm doing is, oh, it's wonderful, beautiful. You're so lucky to be able to do what you're passionate about. And I am really lucky, and I, I, I don't want to take that for granted. So I put in a lot of time because I know that it is my passion. It yeah. is my source of income, but right. it's also, it's like, it's a part of me. It's always been a part of me. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that I can put it out there and people will appreciate that 
is like that's overcoming one of the humps that you'll encounter as an artist is being able to put yourself out there right. and be accepted for what right. you are right. instead right. of being like, Which oh, you should get happen. a job. Yeah, and some a, a some artists, they pr create work for years and then their work is not even recognized until they're gone. Right. And their brilliance isn't recognized until they're gone. Hopefully they set something up for their family or their right. children to benefit from right. that, you know, right. but most of them don't. Yeah. It's, it's just uh, sometimes hit or miss. Yeah. So I want to go back to your dad's advice because right. I feel like for art, I mean, half of the battle is seeing what's what's not there right. or seeing beyond what's there. Yeah. So what do you think about well, his me, advice let me, now? Let me, let me further was he just talking about realism? Well, let or me further define or? that for you because it was to me it was the best lesson I could have got. So when he walked into the the, the, the kitchen because I was on the kitchen table doing the, the the first drawing. He asked me to close my eyes and to think about uh, what I had seen as I'm driving down the, uh, the, the highway, right? Yeah. Or in, in the vehicle. So I had to close my eyes and envision and remember what, what I had, had seen, seen. Okay. and then make the changes. No one pulled out a photograph or right. said, here's a picture, look, you see the difference? Right. So it was all depending on my own memories, my own visions of what I have already So he was seen. teaching you about observation. He wasn't saying you can't go outside no. the realism of no. what you've seen. He was teaching you to be aware. He was teaching you huge. to think and envision yes. in your mind what you yes. have already seen and then work from that. Right. Yeah. I was talking to a mural artist lately and he was talking about he was always, uh, he worked in film and so mm -hmm. he created sets and walls and things but he said he got a contract where he had to create something you know, fresh from his mind, and he was like, I don't do that kind of way, you know, I replicate, but then, but, which and he's really good at it. He worked for major studios for years, but then he said, I sat and I thought, he said, I had to do this mural of dolls, and I thought of all my daughter's dolls. And he's like, I have such a specific memory now from being a replicating artist, you mm -hmm. know, um, that I could remember these specific dolls, and then I just put it into collage, and it worked, you know? Right. But he's like, if I hadn't had that very specific memory that I had worked on for years uh, yeah. to be able to remember detail, He's like, it wouldn't have happened, but I'm not good at detail. I think some people are better than others. Well, the fun is to take your vision and your thoughts and your memories and to, you know, take that, that vision and evolve it into your creation, mm -hmm. adding your, right. your personality, maybe a color palette right. that, you know, most resembles you. Yeah. Or maybe one that completely goes off the chart yes. so that it's striking and people are like, whoa, that's unusual, yeah. that's uncommon. So... Um, I think by blending all of those things together, you can like define yourself and your style yeah. as an artist. And having your style is important because if you just take other people's work and expand on it, um, you're only expanding a style. Yeah. But if you create your own and expand within yourself and with your own work, then you're creating your look, you yeah. know? Like when you hear Jimi yeah. Hendrix play the guitar, you know it's Jimi right. Hendrix. Right, he has a very So I want people to know when they see my paintings, they already know that right. those are my paintings. Pausing for one second, are we okay? We just lost this one. Okay, so that's the backup. Okay, so we're good. Um, yeah, so let's talk about this series that you've been working on. So you said you've been on this one for eight years. Yeah. Okay, so tell me a little bit about this series for people who aren't familiar. Originally, um, the very first one I did, I was going to do a man walking through a dark forest, right? And I don't know what was inspiring at, at the moment, but I just felt like I wanted to do this really dark, gloomy forest with a man walking yeah. through to a brighter, more positive area. Uh -huh. And as I started to get through the painting, I decided, wait, this is way too serious. <laughs> like, I'm a lot more humorous and right. funny, and I like to joke around. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to put a rabbit head, and that way it doesn't have to be a man or right. a woman. It can right. be... It, yeah. right? Just, yeah. it's a thing. It's, it's, it represents a message. So before I could finish the first one, I sold it unfinished to a guy who wanted to purchase it for his two sons who were national rabbit skinning champions. Oh, good God. And I, I thought to myself, this is not why I started <laughs> this, but okay. So the very next day, a woman came by and she was like, what happened to the painting that you were working on yesterday? I said, I sold it already, unfinished. She said, oh, well, if you could do one and put a splash of color, because it was black and mm -hmm. white. She said, I'm interested in buying one. And I said, well, I was going to put red balloons, but I never got to that point. Yeah. So I did, and that was like eight years ago. Wow. But essentially what it represents for me is if, if, if he's in a walking position, he has a cane, and the cane is to represent something that ails you and that you don't allow to hold you back from moving forward in mm. your life, right? Mm -hmm. And the tuxedo represents feeling positive and good about yourself and trying to attract those things in your life by being a part of that yourself. Right. And like I said, the rabbit head represents a sense of humor. 
and whimsicalness because I wanted right. it to be fun and humorous and intriguing and not necessarily like a man right. or a woman. Right. So I have three daughters and I put the three balloons because my youngest daughter was in Brazil and my other two daughters were here and I couldn't be in two places at once. And I thought, you know, I'm going to put those balloons in every painting mm. so that they know that I'm thinking about them with every day wow. that I'm out here painting. And then my oldest daughter came to tell me she was pregnant and she was like, I need you to oh, put a balloon Oh, we need another balloon. Up here. And I said, well, what if I was already going to put a balloon there? Oh. And she said, well, is that for the baby? And I was like, the what? She's oh. like, surprise. So because the baby was floating wow. around, I yeah. put the balloon floating around. And over oh. the next nine months, so many people connected to that balloon yes. floating around that I just left it yeah. in all the compositions. It's beautiful. So it's like as you stroll through life, be positive, have a sense of humor, hold on to what's dear to you, yeah. you know, and I love keep that. moving forward. I love that. And, and this it, one's like go with the flow. You don't have any yeah. paddles. You don't have a motor. But you have a boat. You should be thankful for, the for that. Yes. And just go with the flow. Awesome. Well, that's lovely. Well, thank you very much. The colors in that are stunning. But yeah, so how can people find you? Like you're out, you're out near the quarter painting sometimes, yeah? Seven days a week. Seven days a week. Yeah, you can find me on Facebook at Delancey Art, on my Facebook page, on Instagram, I'm Delancey Art, and the Stroll series, and Danny Delancey. Um, but if you're in New Orleans, on Royal. come see yeah. him. He's on Royal Street, and you can look at the work, touch it, feel it, breathe it, mm -hmm. buy Experience it. Experience it. Yeah. Experience it. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I'm close to 7-Eleven Royal, which is also where I sometimes have things uh, you know, on display there. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I like to do all the work in public so people can see the actual mm -hmm. process of like, yeah. oh, that is an original. He's doing that right, right. now. So people That's get great. to see that process every right. day. And believe it or not, people change their routes to work so that they can pass in the morning, at lunch, and in the afternoon and That's watch great. the progress of a painting on a daily That's basis. That's lovely. So if you're in New Orleans, add that to your list of stops. Come see Danny sure. Delancey. He'll by. be on Royal Street in the French Quarter. And mm -hmm. get some of his work. It's lovely. It's powerful. And it's a, a well-established series that uh, just keeps evolving. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming to Thank chat with me today. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you.